What's going on YouTube family? Welcome to another fun day of the G6x6 build. Today we're going to do a lot of things to move forward. Now first we're going to be prepping not only the body but the chassis to get these things ready so we can mate the one chassis to the 6x6 chassis and also the original uh, G-Wagon body to the uh, 6x6 truck bed. So today what we're going to be doing is a lot of cutting, a lot of chopping, so I pray to God I don't catch myself on fire or the shop itself, but you'll have to stay tuned to the whole video to find that one out. But also I'm going to talk a little bit about more about Luxury Lease Partners, our sponsor of the build. Huge shout out to these guys. So before I do, let's go ahead and talk about the chassis and what we're going to be doing today. All right, guys, here is our factory frame. As you can see, we're going to have to do a lot of cleaning, a lot of degreasing. Everything you see here is going to be repainted. Now, just to give you guys kind of a heads up, we're actually going to be cutting the frame right here. So we're probably not going to clean a lot of this stuff. We are going to take some of these brackets like this and a few other things and move them over to the other chassis because this one's a newer model, has more features than the old one. But we're going to be going through making sure that we transfer everything correctly to the next body. So what we're going to do now is clean all this stuff up, take it apart and line it up underneath the frame jig to make sure that we know where all these parts go. Now, a lot of this stuff is going to go away because we're not going to have factory airbags. We have our lifted suspension with our portal axles. So we're not going to need a lot of these airlines and stuff like that. So we're going to go through and clean this whole thing up and start getting it ready to prep for the actual six by six frame, which is over here, which let me walk over here real quick. As you guys can tell, I bought a bunch of tools. Shout out to Arbor Freight. Um, so here's the factory frame. Like I said, we're going to go ahead and start taking some of the parts over and tack welding them on the here so we can get it ready for pretty much process. And then next week, or actually I think tomorrow, my friend Nick, he's going to come by, which is a professional welder. He's going to help us weld all this stuff up so we can connect the two frame bits. Now, just to give you a heads up, this is the front and it still sticks out another three feet. Just to give you kind of a size difference, I think when we measured it, it was somewhere around like 26 or 27 feet long. This thing is massive. I can't wait to see it done. So as you can see, we're moving forward. We got the two bodies lined up, but let me show you the difference of why I'm thinking about cutting this bottom half and mating it with the 2017. Now, if you look right here, you can see it's kind of rusted. It's not in great shape. Then I have to cut this all out and do all this other stuff. And let me show you the other side here. Here's the other side, same thing. It's got some rust. So this came off obviously an older G-Wagon, but they used this as they built the body. So what we're thinking about doing is actually making a cut right here and going straight up or either this way, angling it out and cutting off this bottom piece. So this way we can use the actual piece from this. Now, if I peel this back right here, these are all the spot welds. We're gonna go ahead and drill these out and take off this bottom piece and this bottom piece is gonna be cut back probably about maybe six inches. And the reason why we're doing that is because on this one, we're actually gonna leave the bottom piece out six inches. So we have a level, actually here, let me hold this here real quick. So what we're gonna do, the reason why I'm cutting this one back six inches underneath this sheet metal that you're seeing here is because we wanna have a ledge like this on the old frame. So when we mount the new one, it's just gonna be the sheet metal on top. So once we put them together, they have something to lie on and we're gonna go ahead and redo all those spot welds. That's why this one. So as you can see, these spot welds have all been peeled up. Like I said, this sheet metal we're gonna go and we're actually gonna keep this right here. And if you go underneath here about six inches, that's where the frame stops. We're gonna add that in there. So if we cut this right here straight, with kind of a flange, we're gonna have the same thing much easier if we just cut this completely flat. Now, what we're gonna do is the inside here, we're gonna cut completely flat to right about here. And then we're gonna drop it about two inches and then cut it out. The reason why is we always like to have staggered cuts when we make metal, makes it a little bit more stronger, doesn't tear in the same area. And it gives us a chance to weld from the inside on this side and same thing. And this pretty much is just for uh, cosmetic, not actual for structural. We're gonna go ahead and put the pillar in and then line that up. And we're gonna put some extra sheet metal in there as well. But that's what I'm basically measuring for right now. So now that I got everything kind of opened up where I can actually work, we have the front of this peeled off. We're gonna go back about five inches and we're gonna make a line all the way across and cut it. Now you may be looking at me like, Lucky, why are you cutting all these little pieces all at different times? 
the reason is when it comes to something this important, I would rather take my time, measure a bunch of times and cut a bunch of extra space instead of cutting it wrong. I see it happen all the time. We measure, we measure, we think we're great, we make the final cut and then you screw up. So what I'm doing is I'm actually peeling the car back layer by layer, making it easier for me to access the subframe, the sheet metal and actually some of the spot welds. And this is why I do it this way. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and make a line for the five inches all the way across, which is gonna make us a little bit easier. We're either gonna get our cutting wheel and our sawzall to help us make a final cut all the way through. And then we're gonna make sure our angles are straight, but everything else is looking good. Let's get to it. Now, before we get started, gotta put the safety goggles on. Totally forgot. Remember, safety is sexy. This thing is absolutely insane. I can't describe how massive this thing is. I pushed both of the sides together. We still have another maybe six to eight inches of the bumper hanging out with the wench and all that other stuff. But I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys a walkthrough of what it currently looks like and kind of give you a size reference. Now, just to give you an idea, I'm actually filming this on my iPhone with it zoomed all the way out. And this thing is absolutely massive. We got it all the way over here. We got the sides kind of put together. We're still about maybe four or five inches apart, but once we get leveled off, this will be the actual size. And then we have the front end. And remember, we still have another foot and a half with the winch and all that other stuff. This thing is insane. I'm gonna try to go all the way back here in my shop to show you guys the actual length. It is absolutely ridiculous. What I'm gonna do right now is I'm actually gonna measure this thing. I'm gonna set the camera down, get the tape measure and see actually what it is. for the actual bumper, we're probably gonna be about 21 feet, which is absolutely insane for this thing. And also, once it actually gets lifted, I believe it's gonna be, the ground height's probably gonna be maybe another six inches higher than what it currently is right now, because I know you could be six foot five and not even be able to see over the top of this thing. So hopefully another six inches will be the actual right height, but this is why I love the G6 like this. I think there's nothing else on the road like this. You see a lot of these 6x6 Jeeps, which don't get me wrong, they're very cool, but they got either the regular V6s in them or they put a Hemi in it. This thing is going to have a real functioning third axle. No lazy axle, no dead axle. This is going to be a real off-road machine and I'm super excited. Right now we're kind of doing the body work. But now we gotta start planning for all the stuff in the future. Let me go ahead and grab the camera and talk about it. Now I'm super excited about the progress we made on the G6x6 build this week. Our goal is to be done somewhere around March 15th, fingers crossed if nothing happens and the shop doesn't burn down. But none of this would have been possible without today's sponsor, Luxury Lease Partners. So if you're thinking about getting a new exotic car, a classic car, or a luxury car, Luxury Lease Partners has amazing leasing options for you to help you get into your dream car. If you're worried about your credit, you have good credit or bad credit, don't worry, they have programs for all types of credit. You can actually call them and explain your financial situation to them and get it approved as little as 15 minutes on the phone. And the best part is you can actually talk to a real human being, not a robot, not something automated, and explain your financial situation. And once you get approved, if you can't find your dream car, guess what? They can help you find it. They have an amazing network of dealers that sell and specialize in exotic and classic cars that can help you find your dream car. So I'll leave a number on the screen 
please reach out to them, tell them the Lucky sent you. And once you get approved for your car, if you could do me a favor, take a picture of it and tag me on Instagram. I'd love to see your guys' dream cars and want to share the story going forward. All right, guys, let me show you what we've done so far. We got all the sheet metal basically cleared off. We had to drill out all the spot welds, which you guys can see here. And we had to basically peel off the top layer of sheet metal. Now, there's a few reasons why we did this. We wanted to have a shelf so this one, when we attach it to the actual new body, it has something to sit on. But on top of that, it'll give us more space to actually line everything up because these spot welds are factory welds in this frame, which are going to connect to this one. So as you can see right here, we're already drilling all these out. Unfortunately, my battery died, so I'm going to have to go out and uh, wait for that one to charge. But I'm going to peel this off in probably another hour or so. This is all going to be off, and we're actually going to meet these two pieces. And on top of that, once we do, this will give us a factory clearance. So I can go ahead and cut the last parts like this right here. I'm gonna cut this to the actual length of what this one's supposed to be. And then we're gonna start meeting up the roof because if you look right here, you see the ridges and everything else, it'll line up with those ridges you could see. Hold on, let me get closer. So you can see the ridges there. All that will start to line up and then we'll go ahead and put the body parts together. So this way to give you guys an overall picture. But once we do this, we still can't weld because one, we have to take all this. If you see this orange stuff, this is all seam sealer uh, under body coating. We're gonna have to basically grind all this stuff off between both pieces, weld it, and then primer it so this way we can add that on. But we also don't wanna weld these two pieces until we have the frame finished because it's very important. Once the frame is together, all of our mounting points should line up to factory mounting points on these bodies. So first we have to do the chassis. So this is why the majority of the video today is gonna to be going over all the sheet metal on this car. Now it's taken me about a day and a half, two days to get to this point. And it's a lot of cutting, measuring, going slow. I know a lot of people are like, oh, you could just chop it off and, and, and mend it really quickly. That's not the point. I'd rather go slow and cut it off in sections to make sure that everything is gonna fit correctly. Well, it's about time to do the outro. I've been drilling spot welds all day. I think we've got about a thousand of them. It's about 11.30 at night and I'm exhausted. So I wanna talk about some of the things we've accomplished this video and what we got going forward to the next video. So the body's pretty much ready to go. Once we do the frame, which is gonna be next video, that's gonna be able to set the pace on how fast we could finish this thing. Now, my goal is to be somewhere around March 15th. Once we get the frame and the body on, it's gonna speed up really, really quickly. And I'm really happy about the progress that we're going so far. Now, my goal with this build is not only to showcase like fun stuff that you can do, but if you're thinking about getting in the automotive industry, there's literally a million things you can do. Originally, I did this build because a lot of people didn't think that I would work with my hands or build something on my own. And so this is half of the goal. Now, I love the car business. Don't get me wrong. I love buying and selling cars and buying auto loan portfolios. But believe it or not, this stressful work is actually my favorite thing to do. I just stopped doing it about eight years ago because nobody wants to pay for it. Custom fabrication has pretty much died unless you have a really high-end shop of good customers. But that's why I decided to do this and just build this thing on YouTube to hopefully share with you guys some of the process. Now, next week's video, we're gonna have my friend Nick come in. And like I said, he's gonna actually help us cut and weld the frame to make sure that it's strong, that we have no issues and no problems. Also, we're gonna be taking the portal axles and the axles to a guy here in Las Vegas named Bill Rader. Now, this guy has worked on real G6x6s and is the only person that's, I guess, somewhat certified and classified to do these types of builds. So my goal is to go with him, have him do the portal axles because one thing I'll tell you about the automotive industry, if you don't know how to do it and it's an expensive part, don't risk it. It looks pretty simplistic, but I have never done it, so I don't wanna risk it. I'm gonna take it to him, a professional, and get it done. Just like we talked about the frame. I can weld, but to do structural welding, it's been probably a few years. And I don't wanna risk it, especially on something this crazy of a build, so I'm gonna have him do that. But, you know, once again, I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. You know, a lot of my videos get anywhere from 50 to 100,000 views on average, but for some reason, this G6x6 build hasn't got a lot of views. Now, I know you guys are used to me sitting in my office talking shit about the car market, but I'm hoping that you guys will enjoy this type of content and look forward to, uh, look forward to it more often because I am gonna be doing builds going forward. This will be the first one. I got another a few cool builds that are coming up here shortly. But anyways, please put in the comment section below what you guys think of the build so far. Also, we're, th we're starting to think about interior colors and exterior colors. Let me know what you think I should do the interior. I'm, I'm partial to red. I love the bright red leather uh, when it pops on these G-Wagons. And then the outside, I'm kind of open to it. 
I like white. A lot of people told me not to do white. It'll look too plain. Do some other crazy colors. So like I said, let me know in the comment section below what you think the color I should be. But I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Once again, huge shout out to Luxury Lease Partners. Call them. I'll leave a number in the description below and a link to their website. And uh, follow me on Instagram at Lucky Lopez. We do all kinds of build updates like this. Also when I'm buying and selling cars and going to the auction. So there's a lot more intimate content on my Instagram. And I guess we'll see you next build day.